Good morning, future multilinguals. I, James, speaking about cosplay. Now, I shouldn't really be speaking, well, perhaps, I don't really know what it is. I've only ever seen it used with the meaning of pretending to be someone else, using all of the adornments of something that you're not to pretend to be that thing. And today we're talking about YouTube's cosplay teachers. Now, if you like, this is probably cosplay. Did you did you see that phenomenon when we all went onto Zoom and suddenly every one of your colleagues in a meeting was sat in front of a library? It is it's using adornments to give a message to the world of education. But there are also a group of people who I think take this a step further and probably actively harm not physically or psychologically but by maybe psychologically actually by pulling back their learning so what do they do well, they'll normally oh, I should have had a book there's actually rather embarrassing one of my first videos where I'm reading a book um, but what these people do is, is it's like a, you know this guy's a learner. And it can literally be any book. They'll like have about four books on their bookshelf and they'll be just looking at this guy to, uh, what is it? Oh, yeah. Arctic animals. They're one of the four books I own. Oh, I didn't see you there. And then normally in my experience, they'll start like, intelligently explaining to you why you got things wrong. But they don't want to appear, even though their video's called Errors You Don't Want to Make, or, or Laughable Errors, or whatever. They want to say something humane at the start, so they'll say something like, um, now remember, it is not bad to make an error. And then they're like, oh shit, I can't say that because my whole video is about uh, not making errors. So they'll go, what's bad? He's making it again, you know, a second time. And he's like, uh, <laughs> it just sounds confused to me. Is there anybody in the history of language acquisition who has only made an error? Well, you know that I, I'm not totally in agreement with that term. Who's ever made an error once? <laughs> What's bad is if you do what is normal to do and not follow my instructions in order to get everything right after the first time. And so <laughs> they pretend. So then they go on, and, and I saw one, he was inspired. He goes, Asta Jo, Asta Jo. <laughs> even me, even I commit errors. And sort of, you know, humanizing himself again. But the problem <laughs> with this is, is that normally they've identified like an error that people make at a certain stage of language learning, yeah? We're building a representation for the, uh, for the cosplay teachers at the back. Language is about building a mental representation, okay? It's knowledge, yeah? Obviously, obviously, that mental representation isn't going to be changed because somebody says, you know what? You've been totally wrong. It is this and not this. Obviously, that will not change your mental representation. People pretending to be language teachers on Twitter. Please correct me, pretend language teachers. It's just gonna make you stressed, okay? So what we need to do is think a little bit more about who is this person and how our languages learn. How much input do you need to make a change to your implicit mental representation of the language, your abstract implicit mental representation? Well, you need a lot. And it can't just be focused on... We're sort of going to have this discussion. Can you aid it? by loading it with specific forms, we'll have that discussion. But it's not gonna be changed just by someone focusing you on a form once, or by giving you an explicit explanation of the grammar. 
because as we've said, those two things are separate and stored separately in our cognition, not our condition. Implicit, explicit knowledge. So, why, why did I say that potentially these people do harm? Well, when you haven't bothered to look at how a language is acquired, yeah, that doesn't make you some free wheeler, yeah, who's just looking for effective solutions. No, it makes you somebody controlled by your unconscious biases. If you haven't bothered to look at why certain terms are considered, for example, racist by other people, you're not some freewheeler just looking for truth and free speech. You're controlled by your unconscious biases. If we haven't bothered to look at something, frequently we're controlled by our unconscious biases. Lamentably, in their rush to make a video, for who, who knows what reason, yeah, these people didn't take the time to look at languages for learn. They just put da -da, the adornments of being a teacher. You see them all the time. They'll offer advice like this. I'm an expert on the IELTS exam, and I can tell you the 150 words you need to know. Have you bothered to look how possible it is to learn 150 words, to memorize 150 words from your memorizing book? No, you've just put the adornments of looking like a kind person and being a teacher. Or, Speak business English with me, business English person. Have you bothered to look at how language is acquired? Have you thought about, you know, does this person need input? Whatever, yeah? No. You've just put on a pair of spectacles and put a briefcase next to yourself. the adornments or the cosplay of being something, we might, actually, if we thought about it, we'd be like, how oh, ridiculous. But again, subconsciously, they know that we're gonna click because they've worn a pair of glasses and got a book in their hand. So we need to be careful of this sort, be careful of this sort of thing. And use not our unconscious biases, but have a look at how languages are learned. So that when someone says something, we're not just like, he's got a book in his hand and he's a native speaker of English. Oh my God, he must be a genius. No, so that we're like, okay, I've had a look at how languages are acquired. I've had a look at what professional language can mean. Yeah. And this is pure nonsense. That's James, future multilingual, making a call to be careful. Like the video, subscribe to the channel.